Welcome, dear listeners of Kanguka. My name is Chris Ndikomana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Tuesday, and I want to share a word, especially with those who are going through very difficult times. Some of you listening to me feel like your life is at a standstill. Nothing's working for you. There are people who are believers. You are saved. You know God, but you're in a barrel and you're struggling. There are so many things that are causing you to lose hope and you feel like giving up completely. But let me tell you that there is hope in the word of God. You need to know that being a believer who knows God doesn't prevent you from going through hard times. We live in a world that's full of problems. Money problems, marriage problems, workplace problems, health problems. We experience so many problems because we live in a fallen world. Ever since the day Adam and Eve sinned, the earth has been full of problems and is still the case today. Jesus never said that we won't have problems. But I want to encourage those who are going through hard times, those who have lost hope. If you think that God doesn't hear you, let me tell you that if you pray to I am in the name of Jesus, he hears you. Let me repeat it. If you pray in the name of Jesus, your prayers are heard. You may think that your prayers aren't heard because you don't see any change. You may think that your prayers are useless because you don't even get a dream or a prophecy. Nothing changes. Instead of seeing improvement, you see your situation getting worse. Satan is using this opportunity to fill your mind with his lies. He tells you that God has abandoned you, that God doesn't love you anymore. But let me tell you that these are lies from Satan. I want to encourage you and let you know that as long you still believe and you still set your eyes on I am, there is hope for you. The only thing that can prevent you from advancing and cause all your doors to remain shut is words of complaining that may be coming from your mouth. Stop complaining. Stop losing hope. Stop believing that God has abandoned you. That's a lie from Satan. Jesus loves you regardless of who you are and what you've done. He listens to anyone who calls on him. I want to encourage all of you who are facing hardships, all of you who think that it's over for you. In John 16 verse 33, Jesus said that he wants us to have peace in him and that in this world we have tribulation, but we need to be of good cheer. If you are discouraged, I want you to know that Jesus is telling you to not be discouraged, but to be of good cheer. Why should you lose hope? The answer is in the last part of the verse. Jesus said that you should be of a good cheer because he has overcome the world. I don't know what you're facing. Some of you have problems in your marriage. Your marriage is falling apart. Your husband is always drunk. For others, the issue is adultery. Maybe you have a nagging wife who's impossible to live with. But Jesus is telling you that he has overcome your problem. He has overcome the sickness of your child. He has overcome that incurable disease. He has overcome every problem you're facing. He has overcome all your family issues. Some of you have generational curses in your families, but Jesus has overcome those curses. That's why you need to stand on this world in John 16 verse 33. You need to declare that no matter what, you're going to stand on this word because you know that Jesus doesn't lie. He never lies. He said that he has overcome the world, so he has overcome your problems too. Some listeners are facing very difficult times. Maybe you can't have children or you are jobless, you can't find a spouse, you seek, you bound by sin. I urge you to kneel before God and say, Lord Jesus, I'm lifting up my problems to you. I now understand that you have overcome those problems. I give you thanks because you have overcome and I know that in your timing, my problems will come to an end. Dear brothers and sisters, I urge you to stop complaining, stop losing hope, stop saying negative words. Some listeners have stopped praying. You need to wake up and pray. Never stop praying. When you stop praying, you're closing doors all around you. Wake up and pray and don't complain. Put your eyes on Jesus because he has overcome the world. He's more than able to overcome everything you're going through. All he's asking you to do is to not complain and set your eyes on him and believe in him and he will rescue you.
now in the second part of the broadcast and we're continuing with the teaching on thanksgiving yesterday i was talking about a very important verse in psalm chapter 31 verse 1 where david says i will bless the lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth i love the key word david used in this verse which is to bless the lord i keep repeating this because i know that my life changed completely once i understood the power of blessing i am that's why i'm led to share my testimony of how i came to understand this back in 2009 before 2009, I used to pray, I used to give thanks, but I also complained at the same time. I kept alternating between giving thanks and complaining. I was responsible for many closed doors in my life because the words that came out of my mouth were a mix of thanksgiving and complaining. It's in 2009 that I finally understood that my heart and my mouth need to be filled with thanksgiving at all times, even in bad times. I finally understood that when I'm praising and offering thanksgiving to God, I'm actually blessing Him. This revelation filled me with joy and it changed my life. It changed my perspective on life as I realized that I am has granted me the honor of being able to bless him. Imagine that the most respected person in your country comes to you and asks you for a favor that would please him very much. I'm sure that you feel honored and empowered. I want you to know that being able to bless I am is a supreme honor. You need to understand that. When I wake up in the morning, I start thinking about blessing I am before I think about my problems or anything else. Even when I'm still laying in my bed, I'm thinking about how I'm going to bless him. As I leave my bed to go to prayer, I think about blessing I am and I'm anxious to get started. To be able to bless I am is a great honor. I want you to change your perception about thanksgiving. Never say that you have nothing to give thanks for. I am wants to hear words of thanksgiving coming from your mouth. I will explain this in more details in this teaching so you can understand that you don't give thanks to I am only because you've been blessed but you need to give him thanks for who he is. It takes spiritual maturity in order to do that. Giving thanks for blessing you've received is something that many people can do. Even unbeliever may say, thank God, when something good happens to them even though they don't pray. Giving thanks for what God has given you should be the norm. There is nothing special about it. But what's special is to give thanks when there is no solution in sight. It's giving thanks in the midst of your problems. That's a clear indication that you've reached another level in your understanding of I am and you know that you were created to praise him and to bless him in good times, in good and bad times. I really want all of you to understand that one of the reasons we were created is to bless I am. We were created to praise him. We were created to worship him. And that's what we will do in heaven for all eternity. At this very moment that you are listening to me, in heaven there is a multitude of angels who are praising I am. They continually cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I can make this statement based on Isaiah chapter 6 when God opened the eyes of Isaiah and he saw a vision of heaven. He saw I am sitting on the throne and he was surrounded by a multitude of seraphims and one cried to another saying holy, holy, holy. Let me tell you that they didn't start to praise I am when Isaiah saw them. No, they praise I am all the time. I want you to understand that praising God is the only thing they continually do every single day. Even right now, as you're listening to Kanguka right now, in heaven there is a multitude of angels who are praising I am. They speak of his glory and his majesty. They don't do anything else and they don't get tired. Here on earth we get tired, but angels don't get tired. The Bible says that when we get to heaven, we will be like angels and we join them in declaring, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We praise I am at all times. That that's what we were created to do. I am is very pleased by this. He wants to receive praise and thanksgiving. His heart is thirsty for it. 
When you give thanks to him, you're doing something that I am is longing for you to do. You're doing something that you were created to do. You're doing something that sets you apart from billions of other people. The world is full of complaining. It's full of despair. It's full of negative words. But the light of the world are the few people who have understood that their mouth should be filled with thanksgiving. I will continue to explain this topic tomorrow, God willing. I really want that by the end of this teaching, the light Life of every listener of Kangoka will change to a life of worshiping and blessing. I am. We continue tomorrow. Have a great day. If you want to repent or you want to talk to a man of God, you can call or write a WhatsApp message on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.